Welcome back to my channel and a very special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen. I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach and it is Monday, so it's meal prep day. I have three amazing healthy recipes for you that taste so good you're going to be, be shocked. So if you're excited, give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not. Turn your bell on because I do a meal prep every Monday and I actually upload five videos every week. Down in the description box at the very top, I will have my recipe website. That is where you're going to find all of today's recipes as well as nutrition coaching. Highly, highly recommend custom personalized to you macros and calories. That is what I follow to lose and maintain my 140 pound weight loss as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching for questions, accountability, or to talk with me directly. Links, discounts to my favorite things and come join our Facebook group. It's free. It's supportive. We would love to have you are all down in that description box. So let's get started on this week's meal prep. breakfast this week, I'm making ultimate breakfast casserole. I'm so excited for this. I'm actually leaving on Thursday afternoon for the weekend, and I'm so excited to have this every single morning leading up to leaving. Troy will love this as well, so let me show you what you'll need. So you're going to need milk of your choice. I have 1% milk. I'm out of Fair Life, which this recipe doesn't call for much anyways. Minced garlic. I'm going to be using the Jimmy Dean turkey sausage crumbles. You can also use any other type of turkey or chicken sausage, whatever your preference is. You're actually going to need 12 eggs, salt and pepper, an onion, a green bell pepper, bacon, this is the Columbus turkey bacon, one pound of sweet potatoes. I actually just cooked up these potatoes so they are all cooked, they're just ready to be peeled and diced for the recipe. And then for seasoning, in addition to salt and pepper, you need garlic powder, cumin, and paprika. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my turkey bacon into the oven. So I went ahead and peeled and diced up my cooked sweet potato. Now I'm sauteing down the onion and the green pepper until softened. I also added a big scoop of minced garlic to the onion and bell pepper. So for the breakfast casserole, everything is going in to a bowl. So I'm going to add in my cooked sweet potato, the whole package of Jimmy Dean turkey sausage crumbles, And then I'm actually going to crack in 12 eggs. A third of a cup of low fat milk, my chopped up turkey bacon, the garlic onion bell pepper mixture, and then all of my seasonings, salt and pepper, paprika, cumin, and garlic powder. And then we're just going to mix this all together until fully combined. I'm going to spray my baking dish nine by 13 with cooking spray. We're going to add in the casserole mixture. Spread that out nice and even in the bottom. It's going into a 400 degree oven for about 35 minutes. You just want to make sure it's baked completely through. You can also add cheese to this if you would like. I think I'm going to skip that. There's so many good things in here. So let me get this into the oven. I just pulled the breakfast casserole out of the oven. Look at how amazing this looks. This is going to be such an amazing, this is going to be the perfect breakfast. We have tons of protein, healthy fat. We've got some vegetables, fiber in those sweet potatoes. I'm gonna pair this with some fruit for the week. I'll go ahead and put serving size, points, calories, macros here on the screen for you. So I have a little change of plans for my lunch meal prep. I was actually going to make little mini meatloaf muffins, but then, my Bideem steamer showed up and I'm changing my plan because I've patiently, maybe not so patiently, been waiting for this. So I'm finally able to make those chicken and mushroom dumplings that I've been wanting to make 
for so long. I love Bybeam. I actually have their tea kettle and I use it all the time. So this is actually a multi-function steamer. Steam electric food steamer. It has multiple functions combining integrating steamer, stew pot, yogurt machine, thawing machine, and baby food supplement into one. Large five quart large capacity. You can also add additional steam racks for various cooking needs. 40% higher efficiency steaming with excellent tightness so it saves cooking time and keeps the nutrition and freshness of the food. This is the healthiest way to cook and the easiest way to make your meat especially nice and juicy tender. All you do is add water when the level is low and the steamer will suspend running and prompt you to add more water when necessary. It also has a drip tray designed to collect wastewater and prevent sauces from dripping into the water reservoir. Super easy to access and extremely easy to clean. So in my Bideen steamer, I am making chicken and mushroom wontons. I'm also going to make some rice in my dash rice cooker to have with my wontons for the week. So let me show you what you'll need. So I'm going to do jasmine rice and for the chicken wontons, you'll need soy sauce, garlic, ginger, you can use fresh ginger or ginger paste, coriander, as well as Chinese five spice. I do not have any Chinese five spice, so I'm going to omit that. Green onions, you can use dried or fresh mushrooms. I would probably do dried, they're more affordable and they're easier to chop up to go into the wonton wrappers. And then chicken of your choice, I am using chicken thighs. So I chopped up my green onions and I have those mushrooms soaking in warm water for about 30 minutes. I'm cooking the rice in my dash rice cooker. This thing is a total game changer, makes cooking rice so easy. I did buy this off of Amazon, I'll link it for you. To use my Bideen steamer to cook my chicken and the actual wonton. So I went ahead and added in my water, just eat, putting the steamer back together, just the pieces layer absolutely beautifully and easy, adding my chicken thighs. This is quite a large surface area. Like I said, this is a five quart steamer, so you can cook a lot at once. I'm actually putting four boneless, skinless chicken thighs on the steamer tray, and then I'm going to quickly season them with some coriander, and then it's super easy to set the timer. Go ahead and select the meat mode, adjust your time. I did set it for 30 minutes. I ended up only cooking the chicken for about 25 minutes, and it came out perfectly. So the steamer, the bi beam steamer just turned off. Look at this beautifully steamed chicken. Oh my gosh, this looks so good. I'm going to go ahead and dice up a couple of the chicken thighs for the wontons and the other two I'm just going to set aside and we'll, and I'll have it for other meals through the week. To make the filling for the wontons, we'll obviously need the chicken and the mushrooms and everything's going to go in a medium sized bowl. So I'm going to add in my green onions, a little bit more coriander, and you would also add your Chinese five spice, ginger, a couple teaspoons of soy sauce, and some minced garlic. I'm going to give this just a quick stir before I add in the chicken and the mushrooms. And I diced up all of my mushrooms, so I'm going to add those. So I added the chicken. I'm going to give it a stir just to mix everything together, and we'll start filling the wontons. So I'm actually going to use the beautiful dish that comes with the steamer to put our wontons in. I did put my wonton wrappers on a plate. I have a wet towel on top just to keep them nice and pliable. So I'm going to pull out one wrapper, place it on my little cutting board here. We're going to add about a tablespoon of our filling to one half of the wrapper. You don't wanna add too much filling. You won't be able to seal the wrapper closed. And I'm going to put my finger in a little bit of water and just rub that along the edges. That'll help seal the wonton. Roll that over shaped like a triangle and seal down the edges. Now my goal is to get 16 wontons. If I get more great, if I get less great, I'm going to use up all of the filling. So I have 18 beautiful wontons total. Let's get these into the steamer. This was so easy to clean. I just popped the tray out and washed it off. Super, super simple. So I'm going to place the dish right on top of the steam grate, pop on our lid, and I'm going to set it for eight minutes. The wontons are almost done. These smell incredible. 
All right, the wontons are completely done. They look, like I said, amazing. They smell amazing. Super easy to cook them with the steamer and really just the healthiest way to cook meat, vegetables, you can make homemade yogurt in here. Really the possibilities are endless. There's so many different steaming options. I absolutely love it. I cannot wait to use it again. I'm going to allow these to cool a little bit. I'll package them up. My plan is to have them with some rice every day. Maybe dip them in some soy sauce. You could do hoisin sauce, oyster sauce, duck sauce. Oh, I'm so excited for this for lunch. By Deem Steamer made it so easy to cook not only the chicken for the wontons, but make the wontons exceptional. I will link the Bideam steamer down below for you. They actually offered a special discount for you. I'll put all of the information in the description box. Definitely get it. I can see myself using this all the time. Honestly, it was the easiest way to cook meat and get it nice and juicy and tender without any oil, any fat. I mean, absolutely a staple kitchen appliance. So again, it'll be linked in the description box for you. For a sweet treat this week, I'm making sweet potato cookies. I can't wait for these. I'm actually headed to my friend Melissa's a little bit later today. I think I'm going to add a few of these to my little treat tray that I'm bringing. So let me show you what you'll need. So you're going to need sweetener of your choice. This is allulose. This is what I use. I buy it right off of Amazon. I will link it for you. I found the best price on Amazon. It is a natural sweetener derived from figs and raisins, so it has zero cooling effect. A lot of you have asked if it has that weird cooling, nothing. It actually tastes like real sugar. I love, love, love it. It's the only thing I've been using. Light butter, powdered sugar alternative of your choice, flour, brown sugar alternative of your choice, sugar-free maple syrup, mine is the one from Chalk Zero, baking powder, an egg, vanilla extract, salt. I went ahead and mashed up about three quarters of a cup of the sweet potatoes that we cooked up earlier. So that was perfect. I double dipped the sweet potatoes, some cinnamon and some nutmeg. I forgot to mention, you'll also need toasted pecans. I actually measured out a cup of whole pecans, threw them in my oven at 400 for about five minutes, got them nice and toasted. That'll just definitely bring out the flavor. So into a pretty good sized bowl, I'm adding one half of a cup of my brown sugar substitute, one quarter cup of allulose, one half of a cup of softened light butter, vanilla extract, my sweet potato puree, and one egg. And then with my mixer, I'm going to mix until combined. And then I'm going to add a pinch of salt, one and an eighth cup of flour. I forgot to mention, I actually halved the original recipe because it makes like four dozen cookies and I do not need that. I don't need that. So I halved the recipe. I'll have the original recipe on my website as well as my halved recipe. So I'm going to add cinnamon and nutmeg, a teaspoon of baking soda, and then three quarters of a cup of those toasted pecans. And then we're going to stir to fully mix. Now I don't know exactly how many cookies I'll get out of the recipe since I modified the original recipe, but I'm going to take, I don't know, a medium sized scoop, a level medium sized scoop, so maybe two tablespoons of the cookie mix and plunk that on a baking sheet. I do have my oven preheating to 375 degrees. So I actually ended up with 18 total. So I'm going to pop these in a 375 degree oven for about 10 minutes or until they are cooked completely through. I just pulled out the cookies. Oh, they smell so good. It smells like a fall bakery in here. These look incredible. I'm going to allow them to cool completely and then we will glaze them. So for the glaze, yes, the cookies have a glaze. I have a quarter cup of powdered sugar substitute. I'm going to add in some maple syrup, a pinch of salt, and then we're going to do milk until we get a glaze consistency. So only do a little bit at a time. Here is what the glaze looks like. This is perfect. I'm just going to set that aside. We're also going to need a little bit more of those toasted pecans for on top. Cookies are completely cooled, so I'm just going to drizzle some glaze on top. And then just sprinkle a couple of pecans on each cookie. So the cookies are done. I just transferred them to a plate just to let that glaze harden. That will also keep the pecans on there as well. I did try a little bit of one of these. These are so good. They remind me of 
pumpkin spice cookies. They're super soft, very, very flavorful. I will put all the information here on the screen for you. Thank you for joining me for this week's meal prep. I hope you enjoyed seeing everything I prepped for the week. Healthy, delicious, protein-packed recipes, well-balanced meals. That's exactly what we're after with splurging with cookies. Adding the sweet potato just adds a really good sweetness to them. I can't wait for these all week. Again, my recipes are on my recipe website. That will be linked at the top of the description box, along with nutrition coaching, links and discounts to my favorite things, and come join that free Facebook group. We'd love to have you. Happy Monday, friends. Here's to an amazing, healthy week, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.